Hi, this is Bill. Windows 8 is launching on October 26th, and I want to give you a brief overview of using Windows 8 and show you how similar it is to uh, Windows 7 and Windows XP. In this configuration, my top two screens are Windows 8, and the lower screen here is a netbook running Windows 7. So on Windows 7, if you wanted to launch an application, you would go down to the Start uh, button, and you would begin typing the name of the program you wanted, like Windows Explorer, and click on that. Or you could uh, wade through the program uh, menus, like uh, All Programs, Accessories, and then find Windows Explorer. And this is kind of where Windows 8 shines. Or you can pin something to the taskbar. You could pin it to the Start menu, like my calculator was, or Sticky Notes. Uh, or you can have a shortcut on the desktop. Guess what? In Windows 8, it's really not that much different. Um, if I drop my mouse down into this little 6x6 target area in the corner, the start button pops up. And if I move off of it, uh, off of that little 6x6 area, eventually after a second or two, the start menu will go away, kind of giving you that clean look again. But if I click on the menu, then uh, it brings up my start menu. I can scroll through all of them just by using my center mouse button. I can also type the name of an application, like Windows File Explorer, they call it now. Uh, we can also have it pinned to the taskbar. We can have a shortcut on the desktop. Um, all of those are still viable within Windows 8. You can also customize uh, the look and feel of the menus and the live tiles. Um, the tiles can be moved around if I right click on one, you can see a little menu pop up down here at the bottom. I can unpin it. Um, if it's uh, in a place where I don't want it, I can shuffle these things around to just about anywhere I want within the uh, start menu area. There's lots of things you can do to customize uh, Windows 8. It's just, there's too many things to go over right now. But in order to launch an application, I just click on the tile and it will open uh, as a modern UI application. Uh, you can see that it kind of flipped around. That's how I kind of know. And they also the clean edge around it. And it's up and running. Now if I want to move it, I can grab hold of the top of it and kind of pull down a little bit and slide over to the other monitor, move it to my second screen. If I want to move it back, same thing, just kind of move over. Now, you can only have one modern app or modern UI app running on a monitor at a time. Uh, well, you can have up to two, but you can only have modern apps running on one monitor. So if I click and drag and kind of slide this over to the left, you'll see this kind of uh, divider bar show up. If I let go, now Internet Explorer is kind of running in that, uh, that quarter of the screen. Now if I want to fire up another modern UI app or Metro app, I can just come down here and let's find uh, my mail. So now I've got mail up and running uh, within the same monitor. But if you notice, desktop is over here uh, running on its own. There isn't a modern UI app running on this. If I uh, load the start menu on another display, like if I come down here and pop this up, you'll notice that the modern UI apps have disappeared from the left screen. So going back to the start menu and looking at the, let me bring it up over on this other display. Um, you can't really tell by looking at these icons and the tiles if they're a modern UI or if they're an x86 application. You can tell once you launch it or you can just know. But uh, let me get a couple other apps going. We had uh, mail here. Let me slide this back so that it's full screened. Uh, and then, let's see, we've got a few things going. Let me get one more going here. Um, the store. So in order to switch between apps, let me go back to the Windows 7. What you would do is you could use the taskbar, hover over those items down there and switch to them. Or you could do an alt tab 
and by alt tabbing you would bring up kind of a menu of the applications that you have or you could do a windows tab which will bring up this kind of rolodex view of what applications you had running well windows 8 is pretty much the same except they did away with arrow um, i can still do alt tab and it brings up a menu and I actually like this one better because this shows you all the modern UI and x86 applications that are running. If I do Windows tab, you'll notice that on the left hand side it brings up uh, a menu, but it's only the modern UI applications that are running. If at this point I want to see the x86, I have to go over to my desktop and look at the icons running in the taskbar to see which apps are actually in fact running. <clears throat> um, to get the upper left hand or the left hand one you can just kind of mouse up in the upper left hand corner and slide down and you will see that menu appear if you don't want to use the the keys um, to get to those. You can do it from either monitor too and by the way there's a little kind of a capture that happens if you get up into this corner it kind of helps you navigate down uh, so if you're up in that 6x6 six six area of the upper left hand corner of a, of a display, especially with the dual monitors it shows up more, it will capture that mouse and show you kind of where it is that you, uh, well, helps you to be able to navigate and get that menu down. So let me go back to my mail application. One of the things that I got lost with early on in using Windows 8 was where are the menus? It's nice clean look that we have, but we lost the menu bars across the top. Well, Microsoft is, has employed what they call charms. So if I go now up to the upper right hand corner, that 6x6 six six little area, slide down, I can get to this charms bar. And again, here's the start menu, and I can get there from, uh, from the charms bar. But what I want to show you is the settings item which this is now kind of that menu that you used to have across the top. So this is accounts, options, different things that I could do within this modern UI application. And it's unique to mail, which happens to be running so far, running at the moment. <clears throat> so if I go back to Internet Explorer and I bring up the charms, it will be settings and so forth for Internet Explorer, Internet options and so forth. So that's kind of how the modern UI one works. If you're running a standard app, it will still have the menu bars, and it'll be running over on the desktop area. So let me show you a little bit about what's changed with the uh, Internet Explorer. Now, this is what Microsoft calls an add-in free browser. So you won't be able to add in um, toolbars and other various things that could potentially slow down the browsing experience. The idea was to keep this experience completely clean and full screen. So if I even click, the address bar goes away. So there's really nothing here except for the uh, web page that I was viewing. If I want to bring those things back, I can right click and now I get the address bar, but I also get this uh, menu across the top. So if I click on the plus sign, this is how I would kind of do tabbed viewing. So now I can, from my frequent, load another page. Now I've got two pages up and running. Let me bring up Internet Explorer on the desktop to kind of show you what the difference is here. So if I pop into IE, you will see basically the old style of browser. I can click on a tab and kind of go back and run same kinds of things but I've always got this menu bar across the top which kind of inhibits the free form uh, of the page but it has its advantages I can also take it so that it's not running full screen depending on the type of work that you're doing um, let me go back to uh, this other page uh, on the modern UI Internet Explorer the add-in free version and if I navigate through a few screens here and start moving forward, one of the things you'll notice is there is a back button down here, but it's not necessarily as intuitive to use there as the newer one, which is if I move over to the left edge, you'll see this arrow appear. And from there, I can use that as my back button. And if I want to go forward again, um, 
there, eh, I don't see it on this one. Let me pop over into MSNBC and see if it shows up on this one. We'll pop into one of these articles. Um, and then go back. And there it is. So there's my forward button on this side. Just got to get kind of into the right spot. So the forward button and the back buttons will appear kind of at mid-level on the uh, add-in free browser. Um, let me go back into the App Store. And one of the cool things I like about this, if you noticed on my Start menu, oops, there was a 3 on my App Store. Now the cool thing is, is that means that there's three updates to the uh, items that I have in the store. So if I go up in here, I can click on updates and one update available. So I click on install and off it goes to pull in those updates, uh, which is really kind of nice to keep the system up to date. These apps are all modern UI apps. They will uh, run on Windows Surface RT or the Windows 8 Pro. Uh, the only apps that will run on the Surface RT will be the modern UI programs. Uh, so to kind of give you a, an idea of the differences between those. But that's really about all I wanted to go over. Uh, just to kind of remind you of how to get to the Start button. You just kind of, it's the same place as it is in Windows XP, down in the lower left hand corner. Uh, you can bring up the modern UI menu of items that you've got running by going up to the upper left hand corner and dragging down. Charms, same kind of idea up in the upper right hand corner. You slide down and you can get to the settings for the various applications. And the one thing I didn't show you that's kind of cool, if I were to take this application and you let's say you just have a single monitor and I slide it over, this is about the only way that you are going to get uh, a modern UI in line with another application. So now I've got my desktop and the store running here. Uh, now I can open up or bring over, let's say, my Windows Explorer onto this window. And that's kind of the experience that you would have. So if I launch another application, let's say bring my mail back, it'll run in this window. If I want to toss the store, it goes full screen. And these will run on either side. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you've got it going. So there's the desktop. So hopefully that gives you some more confidence and uh, it helps you be more comfortable in running and playing with Windows 8 when it comes out here uh, on October 26th. If you have any questions, get a hold of me and I'll try and answer them.